Um, the work that we're doing that goes beyond being just an accreditation organization, really how we hope to inspire uh, hospitals out there in the United States and really internationally. So at the onset of this presentation, um, some of the objectives, which I uh, hope to uh, the audience will uh, gain from this uh, conversation today, will be to get a deeper understanding of how the Joint Commission goes beyond being an accreditation organization. We're going to review some of the emerging survey trends uh, for hospitals in the United States today. We're also going to help identify some available uh, educational resources and information that the Joint Commission offers that could help organizations address um, some common issues that they may be experiencing in their hospitals. And finally, I hope to uh, help you all understand how Joint Commission's working with organizations to inspire them to deliver high quality, safe, and effective patient care. So a little bit of background about the Joint Commission. If you're not familiar, we were founded in 1951. We are a nonprofit organization governed by a 21 member Board of Commissioners. We are the nation's oldest and largest standard setting and accrediting body in the United States. And we have more than 22,000 healthcare organizations who are accredited and certified today. Uh, in the United States, we have over 4,000 US hospitals who are accredited by the Joint Commission. So who are we really today? Um, the Joint Commission prides itself on being an improvement organization. We're focused on healthcare for the public. Our mission, and the two words I really like to focus on, is that we like to evaluate and inspire healthcare organizations to excel in providing safe and effective care of the highest quality and value. We partner with organizations across the entire continuum of care. We are the only accreditor to um, accredit and certify across the entire continuum of care. And we go beyond accreditation as an improvement organization, uh, creating and delivering solutions uh, that would help organizations in advancing quality and safety improvements in their organization. We're going to talk a little bit today about some of those tools that uh, the Joint Commission offers uh, complementary uh, to accredited organizations. We do uh, write and maintain our own uh, standards, which are all evidence-based. And we are continuously using Lean Six Sigma and change management methodologies within our own organization to see how we can continuously improve our own business and the work we're doing. And finally, the Joint Commission has been on a uh, initiative and leading the way to zero harm. So creating that vision for high reliability in healthcare today and providing a roadmap for organizations to get there. I want to start a little bit about uh, and share a little bit with uh, how the Joint Commission is um, advancing um, their efforts in advocacy. Um, the Joint Commission uh, does work on a daily basis on Capitol Hill and working in um, regular healthcare topics. Um, we do work with um, and regularly interface with many governmental agencies um, that go beyond just CMS. Uh, we've also done a number of uh, advancements in uh, ways that we can inspire um, organizations to improve quality and safety. We have our own advisory groups that we work with on a daily, weekly, monthly um, initiative. Uh, to, to advance healthcare as well, and to gain voice the customer and feedback from uh, organizations. There are a number of professional associations that the Joint Commission works with, um, and we've also developed and maintained some exclusive payer relationships with some quality incentive programs of our disease-specific care um, certification programs. And one thing we really have liked uh, recently is we do uh, more advancing our work with state hospital associations. So how we can work with uh, your state hospitals to provide education and resources that they would see um, to be most beneficial to the hospitals, uh, whether accredited or not accredited by the Joint Commission um, within their respective states. So a little bit of background about the Joint Commission's um, survey process. Uh, in 2016, 2016, uh, the Joint Commission uh, 
changed their survey process in uh, using what we call a safer matrix. So the grid to the right-hand side of the screen uh, displays our safer matrix. This is how we give a visual representation of survey findings um, after the close of an on-site survey event. So we've had a complete shift in how our survey um, is focused. It's completely uh, looking at a risk assessment, risk identification within organizations. The SAFER matrix is really developed to communicate an organization's um, biggest risk points. Uh, it helps an organization to prioritize their improvement efforts within their system. And then it can be used as an inter internal comparison tool uh, for your health system as well. So there's a lot of information and data that uh, the Joint Commission provides in these areas. We're going to, to dive a little deeper into that as we further the discussion. But it's not just how Joint Commission is providing that data to organizations, but also how your organization can use it across your entire system uh, as a comparison tool. Our on-site survey evaluation, also in, in discussions with how our surveyors uh, differentiate. Um, our surveyors are all, um, they have very um, extensive uh, background in education and they have uh, numerous ongoing uh, continuous education initiatives. Uh, they're all trained in some form of Lean Six Sigma. Um, and process improvement um, initiatives. Uh, the approach and what we've uh, really sort of prided ourselves on um, recently is uh, being very data-driven in the on-site survey process. It's very specific to your organization and it's also patient-centric. Um, our surveyors are also selected based on the background of your organization. Um, our surveyors do also have um, they're selected based on their educational background and their expertise. Um, so some of those areas could be um, in the pediatric, the oncology uh, world, as well as uh, we do employ um, psychiatrists as well for psychiatric hospitals. And another point to um, really uh, speak about here is how the on-site survey process is also engaging organizations on their own journey in high reliability. So really having the surveyors speak with uh, your leadership and staff about um, your own efforts internally on advancing quality and patient safety as well. So now we're going to talk about some of the most common areas of risk that hospitals are facing today. This is data that we've actually collected through our on-site um, survey process. So this is data that was collected through from January 1st to 2019 through June 30th of 2019. And these were first strictly hospital surveys uh, from the Joint Commission. So the, our safer matrix really depicts um, risk in organizations as well as the um, likelihood to harm a patient. So uh, sort of how this grid uh, works is your lower left-hand corner, the yellow um, box um, would speak to what percentage of findings occur um, in what we call a low limited uh, category. So the scope of um, it impacting a hospital would be in a limited capacity. Maybe it's contained to a unit or a department within your hospital, um, and it's not in a uh, widespread fashion. Um, and the, um, the likelihood to potentially harm a patient or staff um, would be um, the other side of your access um, of your grid here. So if you move up into the upper right-hand box of this, of the uh, sort of the nine box grid here, you can kind of get an idea of where placement of findings occur in hospitals, at least for the first six months of the year in 2019. So if we dig a little deeper into our most frequently cited um, standards and elements of performance, um, this is sort of our top 10 list of frequently cited standards um, within the hospital program today. And really the way to read this is um, looking top down what the most frequently cited standard is and what the most um, common issues are that organizations face today. I've put a little um, box here on the right-hand side that would um, within a few keywords, give you an idea of 
um, what these areas are that um, organizations um, find most challenging today. And the way to read it would be um, in terms of likelihood to harm um, or where they fall within that nine box grid. That's how the color scheme advances as you move left to right and the total number of surveys uh, where you would have a likelihood to harm versus a low limited um, sort of finding. This is something Joint Commission provides very regularly today. Um, I would say that the Joint Commission has um, advanced their efforts in the use of analytics and data. So how we're using this data to uh, proactively um, share with organizations, um, all accredited uh, organizations do regularly receive this sort of update. Uh, we provide this as a way for organizations to stay uh, ready for their uh, surveys and just to show them what are some of the common trends that are occurring in uh, U.S. hospitals today. I did want to provide uh, just an example, a few examples in our presentation today of what we consider to be um, a sample a survey observation. So we see one of the most frequently cited standards in an infection control area and uh, the bullet points of what you could see um, a sample observation uh, being in these areas. So one of our most common, commonly cited standards and elements performance are in the areas of high level disinfection and sterilization and the following bullet points would provide you a few, a few examples of some of those observations that are found. Uh, in hospitals today. And we won't go over every one of these in detail. They'll be in your slides for you to uh, review. And I've also provided a little bit of background in your materials and the appendix of the materials that do talk a little bit about our safer matrix and go a little bit into more detail about the definitions behind um, scope and uh, likelihood to harm uh, patients. So you can kind of uh, get an idea of what uh, those operational definitions are within our safer matrix. These are some of the most frequently cited high likelihood to harm um, standards and elements of performance. And this is a, just a way to show organizations some of the most common themes uh, that are going on in hospitals today and where they're most likely to harm patients. So the idea would be providing organizations this information proactively in order to prevent uh, further harm or an opportunity to harm a patient um, in your organization. And again, we've provided on the right-hand side of each of these 10 um, commonly cited high likelihood harm, a few keywords so you can have an idea of um, what these standards entail. And again, a few examples of what some of these frequently cited sample observations are. So you can take a look at these. And I've separated some of the most commonly cited standards and elements performance um, from a clinical standpoint to an environment of care and life safety code standpoint. So the, the slides that preceded these were uh, strictly clinical standards and um, elements performance. Now we're looking at the environment of care and life safety uh, components within your hospital setting. Uh, so what are some of the, um, the issues that you're facing from a building standpoint? The Joint Commission does employ and uh, send uh, life safety code specialists and engineers to all of our um, hospital surveys. And they look specifically at those two chapters of standards so you can have an idea of what the top 10 frequently cited standards and elements of performance are in the environment of care world. And some similar to uh, previous slides, some examples of what those observations are today. And like the previous slides, we have some frequently cited high likelihood to harm uh, standards and elements performance from the life safety and environment of care areas as well. So safe environment uh, being uh, number one on that list. And everything on the left-hand side is a reference to the particular standard for Joint Commission. I've provided some definitions at the bottom here, but like I said, the appendix will provide some operational definitions of high likelihood to harm um, and uh, scope uh, as well. 
and you can see some sample observations in here as well. So now we've shown some of the data uh, behind some of the surveys this year. Um, what are some quality and safety improvement tools that the Joint Commission has offered to their accredited customers that could help um, in resources to, um, to assist organizations um, in preventing these from occurring? So one powerful tool that the Joint Commission has launched um, uh, for the last 10 years or so has been in the targeted solutions tool area. Um, we do have currently four uh, quality improvement tools um, in our targeted solutions area. And these are really sort of aimed at the uh, four uh, areas that um, are very critical within your hospital um, and in terms of compliance uh, as well. Um, and those are hand hygiene, safe surgery, handoff communications, and preventing falls. We also have a fifth module um, that is currently under development that should be launched in the first quarter of 2020 um, on sepsis. All of these targeted solutions tools are evident, provide, are intended to provide your organization with evidence-based solutions that are unique to your organization. So this is an online tool that your organization can use, that they can access, you can um, assign users uh, within your own organization that can use this tool to enter uh, root causes, they can enter issues uh, that are going on in their facility that um, are preventing them um, at achieving um, high compliance rates in these areas, and they will get uh, unique solutions to their organization to help implement and fix those issues today. So what I did was took one of the tools, the targeted solutions tools, this was the preventing falls tool, and um, a little bit of data that went behind this. When the Joint Commission was developing these tools, we did use Lean Six Sigma um, and change management methodologies to develop these tools um, to provide to organizations. So this gives you a little bit of a background on that tool today. Um, and when we were piloting the project and looking at how these uh, tools could uh, be utilized, um, we, used, uh, we used a pilot of hospitals and looked at different causes for uh, why falls occurred in those facilities. And then a result of our pilot was that these organizations and using our targeted solutions tool uh, reduced their fall rate um, overall by 73%. And of those, they result, the, the results concluded that they reduced falls with injuries by 84%. So using this tool, here was the data that was provided um, to you that shows that these tools actually do work. And within the preventing falls uh, targeted solutions tool, here's some implications of a typical uh, hospital today. And if you're successful in, in using a tool that's provided such as this, um, here are some of these, um, the outcomes of that may be able to occur if um, successfully used and implemented. So this gives you a little bit of a breakdown between uh, two completely different um, organizations by bed size and expectation of if, a, if the fall rate occurred um, at the rate that it has been, what the, how you could uh, reduce the number of falls and what the cost avoidance could be within your organization. So here are all the targeted solutions tools um, that I spoke about. And from these projects, the results of each of these um, tools through pilots uh, with organizations um, are provided in the right-hand column. Our hand hygiene uh, targeted solutions tool uh, resulted in an increase in compliance by 71%, handoff communication uh, failures decreased by 50%, 56%. Um, so you can see how this these tools have positively uh, impacted organizations today. Some other re educational resources that we provide organizations, there are a number of resource portals that are out there for organizations uh, today. These are actually available uh, to the general public through our website. If you um, follow the topics page of our website, you'll find uh, these portals today. So particularly one I like to highlight is a new suicide prevention portal 
that the Joint Commission launched in the first quarter of 2019. Um, very important to um, take a look at that. There's a resource compendium that the Joint Commission has uh, put together that is there for organizations to use as an additional resource. Um, the Joint Commission also provides a number of newsletters and communications to organization, organizations today. And it's really geared at some of the most important um, quality and safety issues in organizations. Our quick safety and sentinel event alerts are two very common um, communication methods the Joint Commission uses today um, to help your organizations um, stay up to date on work that Joint Commission's uh, doing in those areas as well as um, hoping that your organization is raising awareness of org in organizations as well. These are some of the resources that Joint Commission offers today in some of the most common hospital acquired conditions. So the left hand column would provide you with some of the most common hospital acquired conditions uh, followed by a uh, middle column, which are the actual resources Joint Commission offers to combat or prevent these um, these issues from occurring in your organization. And then the cost of occurrence um, from um, AHRQ data from 2017 uh, would provide you a little bit of a background about what the cost could be for one occurrence in your organization um, and just the number of tools that the Joint Commission can provide uh, to prevent these areas. I also want to touch base today on talking about how the Joint Commission has advanced efforts in making the healthcare world a more highly reliable industry. So our president and CEO, Dr. Mark Chasson, had an article in the Millbank Quarterly in 2013 that you can uh, find called High Reliability Healthcare, getting there from here. Um, so there's a little bit of a reference here in the slides. And I encourage everybody to um, take a look if you have not seen this article before. Um, so what does transforming healthcare into a high reliability industry look like? Well, the Joint Commission's Leading the Way to Zero campaign is really aimed at um, helping organizations get to zero falls or complications of care or really any lost opportunities per to provide exemplary care within organizations today. And also looking at ways to reduce or eliminate harm to staff and visitors of your hospital as well. So the Joint Commission's high reliability model is sort of made up of three pillars. Um, one of those is your leadership's commitment to the goal of zero harm. Another would be your organization's safe adoption of a safety culture. And finally, some form of process, robust process improvements, um, Lean Six Sigma tools, change management tools, something to help your organization advance in those areas today. So this is sort of the model that uh, the Joint Commission has employed in high, re high reliability. This is uh, what organizations, in engaging organizations on their path to high reliability, what surveyors would uh, discuss with organizations as well. So one tool that the, that the Joint Commission provides organizations is a high reliability assessment tool. This is a self-assessment tool that hospital leadership can use complementary uh, to accredited organizations today. This self-assessment tool is really um, intended to gauge an organization on their level of maturity towards their advancement of high reliability in their organization. So there's really four uh, maturity levels that the Joint Commission uh, provides through this tool. Uh, the idea is you're providing this uh, organization assessment um, at your individual level um, of leadership, uh, C-suite leadership, and then um, coming together, convening as a group, and uh, discussing the outcome of those self-assessments and working as an organization to take that assessment as well. Now, part of this uh, tool, the high reliability tool that we call Oro 2.0, is that it also provides a resource library that has uh, resources and uh, by educational topic to help organizations 
um, on this high reliability journey as well. These are the components of that assessment tool. So of the three sort of pillars of leadership, safety, culture, and robust process improvement, these are sort of the areas of um, my topic that uh, the assessment tool will take you through. through. So the, the assessment tool is made up of somewhere around 50 questions, and um, these would be some of the areas that the tool uh, would uh, speak to. Now getting into the appendix, there's a number of uh, resources that I've also put in here, a few that I would like to just point out. So I did give an overview of the Joint Commission as an enterprise. The enterprise today is sort of made up as three uh, organizations. You have the Joint Commission, Joint Commission Resources, which provides our uh, publications, e-products, uh, continuous compliance uh, sort of tools, and then our Center for Transforming Healthcare, which develops high reliability tools such as the um, Quoro 2.0 uh, high, re high reliability assessment, our targeted solutions tools, um, all of these uh, complementary resources that we provide organizations to advance uh, quality and patient safety efforts in their organization today. As an enterprise, we, we all share one vision um, within the organization, so you can see um, sort of how the enterprise is, is made up. And how we touch across the entire continuum of care, I spoke about that earlier, um, but there are a number of certifications that um, reside within each of our accreditation programs, too. These certification programs are specifically targeted to a, a program um, in our disease-specific care uh, program. They will just, uh, they're there to work um, within a specific disease, condition, or a procedure, um, so it's really uh, specific to uh, your organization or within that program. And here were the operational definitions from our SAFER matrix. I just wanted to point those out as well. They're in here for you to review. Um, and here was an example of the suicide prevention portal and the resource compendium that I also spoke to as well. Here's an example of our one of our Sentinel event alerts, um, developing a reporting culture, talking about safety culture within your organization. And I did provide a video that you may watch at your leisure on zero patient harm. This is our Leading the Way to Zero initiative our President Dr. Chasson speaks to um, in the video. I will not play it for time purposes today, but I encourage everybody to take a look at that if you've not already seen that. And this is just a slide to provide you an overview of Joint Commission's impact on quality and patient safety. Um, a lot of things of what we hear with organizations is, you know, um, the Joint Commission does very well in um, providing a meaningful assessment um, across the entire continuum of care. Um, so something we hear back regularly from our customers um, is in that area and, and ways of finding risk within their facilities as well. This just gives you a little bit of an uh, provides you a little bit of how we are, um, how organizations who are Joint Commission accredited are sort of um, viewed um, to the public as well. So with that, I will pause here for any questions and um, happy to take any questions about the, the presentation or any general um, questions that we might have. And I'm, providing my contact information here as well so that uh, we can always continue any dialogue outside of here. Thank you, Chad, so much. That was a very, very informative webinar. Really appreciate that. Uh, we do have a few questions uh, here. So um, uh, one question we have here is um, about um, survey uh, eligibility and requirements and how to apply. Um, can you describe the application process and the follow-up process for us? Yes, absolutely. So I'm, I would be the key contact for your organization uh, through the application process or just understanding eligibility um, for your organization. We do provide some general eligibility on our website. Um, but it's very important to also understand from each uh, individual organization sort of 
what services they provide and where they are in meeting criteria. So I encourage organizations to reach out to me um, to see um, if they are eligible for um, our hospital accreditation, our critical access hospital accreditation um, as well. Um, we do have specific um, patient eligibility uh, criteria uh, to undergo a survey. Um, in terms of the application process, it's really, um, we, we work with organizations on their own timeline for, um, for the application process. So it's really just providing uh, an application through an electronic format that an organization can complete um, on their own time. And also in that electronic format with, of the application is where we house some of those um, quality improvement tools, uh, educational resources that I uh, told you that we provide complementary to organizations. So there's a number of tools that are out there that we also provide organizations in helping them uh, prepare for surveys. So in addition to conversations with me and my staff, um, it would also be pointing to some of these resources that can help your organization in preparation for a survey as well. Okay, actually, that was the next question that uh, we had. It was, how can I prepare for a mm -hmm. joint commission survey? Uh, so if you could answer yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there's a number of resources we do provide to organizations today. Um, you know, we do have um, a manual that's very important in preparation for survey. Uh, depending on the type of organization um, that you are as well, there are a number of resources we offer pro also provide. So things in our, um, uh, psych for psychiatric hospitals, for instance, um, ways to prepare organizations with um, survey data, such as what I showed uh, here today. Um, those would be excellent preparation tools. Um, in helping your organization um, prepare for an initial um, hospital, critical access hospital survey. Okay. Are, are those manuals for, for sale? Or are they for download or what? Yeah. Where are those? So we actually, okay. yeah. So we can, so they are available for sale. All organizations that are undergoing the application process, it is a, they, they, the manual is actually complimentary. Um, okay. And if you ever have questions, if an organization um, wanted to see um, the standards, we can also work with organizations. I'd be happy to speak with you um, on how we could get you um, some access to some of these tools as well. Okay, perfect. Okay, we have another question here. Uh, when, oh, okay, it's about, uh, it's a question of timing. When will I have my <laughs> accreditation decision? Yes, good question. Um, so a lot of this is really built on an organization and their readiness for survey. So um, I like to work with organizations on their own timeline, and we sort of work backwards from when they would like their accreditation decision um, to be in place. So, um, you know, we, uh, we really work on an organization's um, sort of timing for a survey. Um, I typically tell organizations to build a couple of months into the post survey process. So it's the work that is done after um, the survey has taken place um, to fix any corrective actions um, that are required in order to obtain your accreditation. I typically uh, will guide organizations to provide, you know, to give two or three months in that timing um, as well. Um, so we really work backwards from when the accreditation decision um, when they would like the accreditation decision, and um, we can sort of build a time frame of when the application can be submitted and all the, the follow-up work and the preparation um, going into the survey as well. Okay. Okay, here's another one. Uh, are successful surveys achievable for organizations with no knowledge of or who have not worked with the Joint Commission in a very long time? I would say yes. Absolutely. Um, the preparation is what's key and what's important. And um, oftentimes what I, um, when speaking to organizations that have um, no knowledge or have limited knowledge or have not worked with the Joint Commission for, um, for a certain period of time, um, I think there's sometimes a little bit of um, concern over the readiness of their organization. I can assure you that uh, we love to work with organizations in this process and help them understand it. That's what we're here for. 
um, guiding them in any questions that they have. We also have a standards interpretation group. Um, we post a number of frequently asked questions on our website. Um, those are really great resources that organizations can use today um, in uh, preparation for a survey if they have questions about um, their own compliance um, in a particular standard as well. It's okay. very achievable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I would, as, I would assume it's uh, very achievable with a lot of preparation and working, working directly with you and your organization. Absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, here's a good question. Uh, the average cost for accreditation. Yes. Yes. So cost is really dependent on the type of organization and the size. Um, it's, it would be hard to pinpoint with every organization um, that might be listening today. Um, cost could be completely um, different depending on how, uh, how large an organization is. Um, fees are typically... Um, built into really two components. The Joint Commission has an on-site survey fee that is um, billed at the completion of an on-site survey. So organizations, hospitals that go through a survey would be billed for that on-site survey once every three years. And there's a separate fee for Joint Commission um, that we call an annual subscription fee. That annual fee is determined on um, the size of your organization as well. And there are a number of uh, uh, things that are part of that annual fee, but the complementary resources and tools that are provided to your organization um, would be considered part of the annual subscription fee. I should also make note that the Joint Commission <clears throat> offers a dedicated account executive for each of their organizations. This individual works as a liaison to your organization, so they're um, available to you at any time uh, to um, to kind of guide you to any questions that you have as well. Um, those are considered part of your um, annual fee. Wonderful. Great. Well, uh, do you I'd be have happy, any other... And I, Great, sorry. No, I would just say in terms of price, if you ever have any questions about um, for unique to your own organization, I'd be happy to take those questions as well. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you. Um, do you have other any other words of advice or any, any other thoughts that you might have... Uh, thought of uh, here that you wanted to leave us with or advice? I would just like to reiterate the Joint Commission's um, really efforts to um, advance um, safety within uh, hospitals today. Um, you know, I think what the Joint Commission is doing with um, the, worst, the work that they're uh, doing with the analytics and um, the survey findings and how we've advanced the survey um, and identifying true risk points, I think have really become of value to organizations today. We hear um, quite often how the survey process has transformed over the years and um, organizations really um, find value today in uh, the safer matrix. And it helps organizations really um, understand what their survey um, outcome has looked like. Um, it helps them better prepare for future surveys. And then also the way that we've um, provided this data, the transparency that we provide organizations um, now in preparation for survey um, only uh, helps organizations um, along the way as well. Okay. Well, I truly, truly appreciate you coming here today, Chad, uh, from the Joint Commission. It's been a real honor to have you here and to come and um, speak with our audience. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you for having me. Yes. Well, and thank you attendees for um, coming and listening as well. Uh, please use the contact information on the screen for any additional questions that you might have.